Kyle Bazzi. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute. There's still quite a few people filing in on this Good Friday. It seems like you're, if you're like me, you're one of the only people in the office. Um, I hope everyone's doing good today. It, can everyone just do me a quick favor? Uh, type into the questions and let me know, can you hear me all right? Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. And can you see my screen? So if everybody can just type into the uh, either the chat or the questions, uh, that'd be great. Jada, Karen, how about John? How's it going, everybody? Jaylene, all right. Awesome. Well, today, everybody, um, we're going to be reviewing uh, a brand new tool uh, or templates for you all to use called the Chapter Playbook. Um, so this is a part one of a mini series. We're going to be doing two parts to go over this. And we um, have helped put this playbook together, I'll say, uh, for people like you. And what we're trying to accomplish is um, an evolving playbook where we're going to continue to add resources uh, better templates and just an overall uh, better guide uh, to help you all run your chapters or components or sections or state affiliates, whatever that may be inside your organization, okay? So um, first off, uh, for everyone that uh, hasn't joined one of our webinars before, uh, my name is Kyle Bazzi. I'm the director of growth here and um, as I always tell everybody, a very proud Detroiter where we're headquartered. Um, and Bill Highway is all about helping uh, nonprofits that have chapters. So I will make you a promise today uh, and in every webinar, we are not here to sell you. Uh, you will not get a pitch from Bill Highway. You will not get calls saying, are you ready to buy or anything like that. We created these because we saw a huge uh, gap in, in education when it came to helping organizations like yours, associations, in uh, running their, their component organizations, okay? So uh, to get started today, what I want everyone to kind of think through on what we're going to be doing is reviewing this guide, okay? So I'm going to pop over uh, to the guide real quick. Um, and what, what this guide is, like I said earlier, is a culmination of tools and information that we have been collecting uh, for quite some time now. So inside the chat, you should see a link. You're going to see two links. One link is going to be to this chapter playbook. Okay, the other link is going to be, everyone's been asking me uh, that notice I do these webinars every other week. I always get some pump up music to get me ready and, and energized for the webinar. Today's link is in there too. That was uh, Lady Gaga performing at the Kennedy Center for Sting. So check that out as well. It'll give you a little, uh, you know, get those good juices flowing for, uh, for the Friday afternoon. Um, but on the, on the playbook, this is the template we're going to be going over. So we're going to walk through some of these sections. You know, some of these might seem uh, pretty basic to you, and then other ones you might say, wow, I'm uh, in need of a lot of help on this section, and that's really what it's meant to do, okay? So concentrate on what is um, important for your organization right now, uh, and please feel free to ask questions or ask if, um, you know, we have, you know, other resources around that topic, okay? So it's uh, 29 pages, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. But I just wanted to give you a sense. So grab that link, open it up in a, another uh, window or another tab, and I, you'll see that our slides are going to correlate to a, a page inside this PDF today. Okay? All right. So just to get started and, and kind of get us warmed up here, um, as you guys are opening up that PDF, is... Uh, what we want to uh, talk about, so the ultimate guide to growing in, in building out your chapter operations. And you'll notice that I use chapters interchangeably with, you know, components or state affiliates. So whatever your, your uh, um, setup is, when I say chapters, that's what I'm referring to. Now, um, the guide uh, is for your chapters, but it's also to help build gui guidelines to help not only the national organization, but the chapters themselves um, you know, not just survive or not just be there, but actually flourish and grow. So um, a couple of things to get started as you're thinking through this is um, we, if you're not doing this today, we encourage you to get this started. And that is, um, we've heard it called a lot of different things from a working group, uh, a chapter development group. But really what we are encouraging you to do is find some early adopters and progressive chapter leaders that uh, um, are are looking to make things better, right? Not just maintain status quo. And create a cadence with them. So get a cadence of a monthly call going, get a cadence of um, 
uh, you know, regularly talking to them and getting, the, getting feedback from them on their challenges, their pain points, on things that they're looking for from HQ, so on and so forth. Uh, that is something as a CRP we believe is, is vital uh, for, for your guys' function and role. Uh, and also, you know, we, we've heard it called something um, as a, uh, a listening tour, as one of the, the associations called it. And it was where the CRP was working to help provide exposure for the chapter leader's pain points, you know, challenges and opportunities to the national organization. Um, the second one is if you are able, if you're, you know, some organizations can directly survey their members from HQ. Others, it's really the, the chapters that have to do that. So part of as you're getting started in terms of like what am I going to improve um, with chapters or what's a project that is going to help align the um, you know the things we're we're working with on the chapters with our our headquarters strategic objectives whether that's growth or retention whether that's volunteer turnover or whether that is you know maybe it's more specific like a mentorship program um, or reaching a young, younger demographic uh, you know you name it the collaboration with the chapters is is vital for um, the organization to maximize uh, the opportunity. <laughs> So survey regional members allows you to um, go one layer past that, uh, and maybe you need to work on this with your membership team or your marketing team, but understanding what the chapter leader's pain points is number one. Number two is understanding what the members want and what value they're getting out of those chapters. And you can also start to get a sense of, from the member feedback, which chapters are performing well versus which chapters are in greater need of, of your help. We always talk about a third, a third, a third. A third of your chapters you probably love and like talking to, and they're doing great. A third just kind of exists, um, you know, it's neutral. And then a third, every time they call, you're trying to duck their call and banging your head against the wall because they're, they're such a pain in, or a thorn in your side. Um, so getting some more member data allows you to measure, and this is something to write down because it's, it's a, a, a trend that we're seeing in successful associations is can you, get a, can you evolve from just measuring what we call lagging KPIs? Lagging KPIs would be membership growth. Lagging KPIs could be um, the retention rate. And start measuring the leading KPIs at your chapters. So creating a dashboard of chapter data that shows you the activities, the key activities, or membership engagement points that are correlated to better growth, to increasing retention. Um, how do we get in front of that? I have not met an association yet that had an incredible, um, uh, an incredible dashboard uh, or insights into that leading KPI yet. We've seen, you know, flashes in the pan here and there, but can we get in front of the right kinds of data is super important. And then scheduling calls with national, right? So that's that, that monthly cadence that um, we talk about. And then at the end of the day, you know, being the conduit to market your chapters. How can we prove out that when your chapters are doing well, the overall health of the organization is doing better? We find that, and I don't know if a lot of you have this problem, but we've seen it quite a bit where there will be people in the headquartered office that ask you, why do we even have chapters? And I can imagine how infuriating and frustrating that can be because it's very short-sighted. Um, sure, there's problems in, with the way we're operating it, but at the end of the day, we can deliver better member value through the chapters if we work together. And then chapter events. So we're going to talk a bit about that today, uh, more on our next webinar um, about planning and launching chapter events. One of the things that we, we really encourage uh, associations to explore is um, how do you provide better tools for them and create additional revenue streams off the non-dues revenue uh, to create a more cohesive relationship as well, OK? So again, if you're looking at that, uh, that link that we sent out, uh, in the chat, you'll see that this page is on there um, that we're talking about. So we got a few sections here today that we're going to walk through, um, but the first is around chapter finances and accounting. Now, often what we see is, depending on how your organization operates, your chapters are often left to fend for themselves when it comes to uh, a lot of the financial functions, whether that is the banking setup or that is uh, their accounting system, whether that is um, uh, you know, financial reporting to the board or to the state requirements that might be there or even up to, to the headquartered level. So um, a couple of things that we talked through on this section, and again, relating this to the PDF we sent out, 
is the understanding each checker's needs for banking capabilities um, and managing their funds to operate effectively. Okay, so outline, and I don't know if you have this in your affiliation agreement, but th this is a, uh, maybe an uh, important point to, to note. What, what we find is the, the financial process at the chapters is often one of those uh, um, indicators that the organization or, or to the organization's relationship. So what I mean by that is if you're helping, uh, we just talked to an association where they actually purchase QuickBooks for the entire organization's chapter. So they paid, a, they paid an actual yearly fee for each chapter. At least what that did was allowed them to offer better services to the treasurers and also had financial insight uh, and visibility at HQ. That's one of the ways that you can create better control around the operational uh, um, functions of, of the association every day, both at HQ and the chapters, okay? So there's a couple of things to think about on the banking side, and that is to mitigate the risk and liability. And one of the ways you need to do that is obviously have very strong uh, language in your affiliation agreements of how it's supposed to work, but also, you know, the transparency and visibility of the financial controls uh, is, is extremely vital in either setting up new chapters or managing your current ones. Um, what we encourage you to do is, you know, some of you might be saying like, Kyle, that's impossible to get. Um, and what we, would, what we would encourage you to do is try to find small wins first to prove out the value of it. So either that's, you know, new emerging chapters that are opening up, or that's chapters you have really good relationships with that also recognize that they would like help around the, the banking and, and financial functions. All right, so moving on. So again, up in this top right corner, you'll see what page this um, correlates to on the PDF. This is not the slide that we're on, okay? So you're, you uh, can jump over to page three and, and check out um, what we got going on in the, in the playbook. So the bank account setup. Now, this one is often very scary to the national headquarters because everyone uh, at the chapter level seems very entrenched inside their bank account. But uh, there's a great blog post on um, Mariner Management by Peter Housel and Peggy Hoffman, and they talk about how, the, um, how you set up the banking structure is often a key indicator to the relationship between your chapters and the headquartered level. So if chapters set up their own local bank accounts, um, you know, do you have a signer required from national? Uh, check or payment approvals, are there any controls around that? Credit card policies or procedures? required reporting with frequency, dollars owed to national, all of these questions as you're thinking through them, the, the one thing that to challenge yourself with is how do we at HQ try to take all these menial tasks off of the chapters, especially if you're ran all by volunteers? Because often the work they're spending there is taking away from that chapter, investing in their time and resources and energy into the key activities for membership engagement. So this chapter setup for local bank accounts is extremely important. So a couple of things. If you're opening up new chapters, is there a way to not do it how it's always been done, right? And I know you have bylaws and affiliation agreements, but is there a way to try to get them into a different model to prove out the value that exists when HQ sets up more of a consolidated banking model or uh, provides better services um, on the financial side for the chapters. And there's a way for you guys to take a bigger cut for that so you have a, a revenue stream to invest into the chapters too, okay? Because we know a lot of these are big pain points when it comes to either your relationship with the chapters or the chapters themselves that are actually operating, okay? And so again, whether do the dollars are owed per capita up to national because they're collected at the local level, or if the money's collected at national and rebated on down, um, there's, there is, you know, I would invest some time getting educated on really great processes that are out there because this is one of those things that I know you did not probably set up. 99 times out of 100, you probably inherited this when you became the CRP at this association, right, your association. But this is an underlying uh, um, or a foundational pillar to the relationship between you and your chapter. Okay, now we can work on a lot of things together, like uh, our, uh, meaning you and your chapters on marketing or co-branding or you know increasing sponsorship money, and that's all great, uh, and you need to do that, but this is a pillar. So if this is broken, just realize everything else you're gonna do is gonna be harder because 
the banking uh, uh, setup is harder. Okay. So what's the opposite? Well, if chapters leverage either a consolidated banking model or um, this is again talks to like if they bought QuickBooks uh, for all your chapters, um, the the things to think through are um, a lot easier because you have access to that data and you have access to those funds and it's a lot easier to operate. So to give you an example of of you know a different industry that's worked in, um, and I know it it doesn't relate one to one, but the franchise model. If you think of a franchise, this is one of those things that are just set up if I opened up a franchise. Uh, there would be a way of doing business that when I opened up the chapter, that's the way it was done. Uh, and that provides a lot, a lot of strength for the entire organization. Now I get it. Your chapters are probably going to be pulling out their pitchforks if you went and pitched them this. And that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to like, see what problems this is going to solve for them and, and create a working group that's willing to um, iron out the kinks with you so you can roll out that case study to the rest of your chapters. We've seen that done successfully a lot over the years, okay? All right. As always, please, if you've got questions on that, or, or even if you want to just say, Kyle, you're crazy, I promise I won't call you out. You can absolutely tell me uh, that I'm crazy and that that's not going to work. Um, uh, I will accept that answer, okay? All right, so the next one is, uh, again, this is uh, turning to page four in the playbook. It's another service that is uh, uh, quite frequently offered to the chapters, and that is um, around the insurance. And again, this comes to mitigating risk, um, whether that is a, a you know, financial or a legal risk, or even if it's just a PR risk, because the truth of the matter is, and if you haven't been through this before, try, find someone that has, that if one of your chapters has embezzlement or fraud or um, you know, does something illegal and get, it gets picked up on the news, members don't really understand the difference between a chapter and national. They don't understand the intricacies like we do. So they see the brand all as one, okay? So a question that we ask you guys as you're, you're thinking about strengthening your chapters, and again, this is another foundational pillar to it on the risk side, is do chapters receive insurance from national or do they need to obtain it on their own, okay? And so as we're thinking through some of these things, if they receive it from national, um, you know, do they have a point of contact with national? You know, do you have that written clearly in your affiliation agreement? Um, is there an estimated or fixed cost that they're paying for? Um, or is that you know, included in the per capita dues? If they need to obtain it independently, um, you know, do you, are you communicating the minimum coverage requirements? Are you providing a um, provider list, right? a preferred provider list? Um, so that way that maybe you, you can help negotiate better rates for all, all of the chapters. Um, and what other required information is there for national? Okay, so if you're thinking through insurance, um, there's some resources in the playbook for you that you can check out. All right, on to a very big one. We actually did a full webinar on this, and it was one of our most popular webinars, and it was on the chapter due structure. Okay, so this is also found on page four um, inside of uh, your playbook if you're uh, you're following along on there as well. So. A question, let me post it to everybody that's in here, and I, I see some repeat faces too, um, or should, I should say names, not faces. But your, your, your dues, are they collected at the local level? Um, are they collect, and then do they owe you a per capita? Or do you collect dues at national and then rebate a portion of that down back to your chapters? So if you could type that into the chat real quick, I know this is a a, a very fundamental question to how your organization operates. So do you collect dues at the local level or do you collect dues up at national? And is there also other layers in the organization? So maybe there's a state, maybe you have regional sections or divisions. Um, let us know that because that, that's a, a fundamental uh, um, question when it comes to looking even at case studies. So you guys need to concentrate on you know, organizations that have similar structures as you, because if dues are collected at the local level, your chapters just quite frankly have a whole heck of a lot more power and say in what needs to be done because the, the funds flow that way. Uh, and I'm, I'm not telling you anything you don't know right now. Okay, so let me read off a couple of these real quick. We've got a bunch of them. So local captures membership dues, we collect and rebate back to chapters. Collect the dues and remit them to chapters quarterly. Chapters collect own dues, not shared with national. Uh, we do a mixture of both. Okay, great. And there's still a bunch coming in right now. So 
here's something that I would encourage you to explore. Um, and there's a bunch of ways that, that uh, associations are doing this. But if your chapters are collecting the dues, there is a better process out there. Um, and there's ways to incentivize your chapters to get on to a unified dues solution. Okay? If national collects the dues, um, there's something that we've seen as a growing trend at some big and small associations, and that is the consolidated banking. So when you rebate money back to your chapters, you actually rebate it into like a consolidated banking model where the chapters that have virtual bank accounts, okay? So as you, if you're taking notes, like I said, bottom up, I would write down to educate yourself on unified dues um, and how you can accomplish that. If you're top down, um, I would look at the consolidated banking model more because it's probably closer to what could benefit you. Um, if it's a mix, I would look into both, okay? Um, so as I, I saw, there were, we had a variety of answers in here. But if a chapter collects the dues, um, does National provide the technology to enable chapters to do that? Do the chapters need to build this out on their own? So usually when we see a bottom up, all the chapters are running their own systems, their own technology. The, the, you know, the small ones have a checkbook for their accounting system and an Excel spreadsheet for their membership management. And then the big ones might have a couple of staff in their own AMS technology. Um, so when that when that's created, you know, how do we get a unified join and renew process? And how do we get a unified dues process? Some, some important questions to ask yourself um, as you're thinking about, uh, um, you know, better ways of doing it in the future. And then specific chapter messaging. So usually when chapters are collecting the dues, um, there's a lot of pains around uh, the messaging and the branding and the co-marketing, so on and so forth. And then how are they communicating member benefits? So again, this is um, some thought-provoking questions as you're going through the playbook here um, on potential projects to look at um, that will help help create a stronger relationship for everything else that you need to do with them. All right. So now, what if, you know, I know there's actually more than just two answers here, but what if uh, National collects the dues? Well then, when can the chapter expect to receive the funds? How do you remit those back down to them? Um, is it a very easy process? We, we, we are running associations that are you know, spending a, a wire transfer fee for every chapter every single month. Um, and there's a lot, lot easier and better ways of doing that, both from a funds flow, but also from a financial reporting. And then how do you communicate access to a chapter and its benefits? So uh, again, due structure on page four, uh, and, and we have some material on that. And um, one quick thing too, in, uh, in the back of the playbook is um, an appendix section with a ton of templates, okay? So we have um, put these together, either you know, other associations have given them to us and allowed us to reuse them for you all, or uh, we put them together ourselves based on your guys' feedback, okay? So in the back of that playbook, you can check out there is an appendix with a lot of templates for you all to use. So in con so consider this real quick, and I'm sure a bunch of you just clicked back over to the playbook to check out the appendix. Um, how, how to solve your dues process challenges. Um, so a couple of ideas is to require national and chapter reps um, to meet and identify those problems and discuss solutions collaboratively. So this goes back to the working group. Um, if you have that monthly call, pose this as one of the challenges, right? and ask them for their feedback because if you know we find that organizations that are the local chapters are collecting the dues that they're paying for the processing costs even though they're sending a portion of that up to the national so if you want a unified due solution what if you covered your portion of the processing cost so yes it's a new cost HQ but in the same essence that can get you on a unified due solution so you can have your money and your data in real time okay and, and then, again, organize a national and, and chapter task uh, force. I think that's a, um, you know, a, really, a really key point in, in you getting uh, projects rolled out with your chapters, okay? So how to make nationals life easier is um, something that, if you've heard us uh, on these webinars, you hear us talk about a lot about. And what we try to encourage you all to explore is finding ways to automate the sharing of member data and information from chapters. So let me give you an example of that. Um, there, there's an association in Chicago that um, they recognized that events was a key activity for membership engagement. 
So what they said was, okay, how do we get all of our chapters running events in a consistent way that is a best practice inside our ecosystem? So first they defined and they found out what that best practice looked like at the chapter level. And they uh, put a template on how to run an event around that. And then what they did was they actually licensed software for each chapter to use so it was the same software. And the chapters loved this from a few ways because now they didn't have to, uh, number one, purchase that chapter software, I'm sorry, that event software. But also they, they were able to uh, um, get the templates and learn best practices um, from other chapters in that association. So how do you make Nationals life easier? Well now the HQ office had access to a leading indicator. They could look at uh, not just membership growth and retention from the chapters, but they could look at what the membership engagement was for that key activity. And those insights allowed them um, to do a lot more in growing uh, the organization. So um, again, that, that sharing information comes down to finding ways to roll out unified processes and technology between the headquartered office and your chapters. All right. So as you're still looking through the um, uh, the playbook here, one uh, you know this might seem elementary to some, but there's a lot of organizations that are still writing affiliation agreements. There's a lot of them that are opening up new chapters or um, maybe a new concept in a virtual chapter rather than just you know the the common sections you may have. Um, so we wanted to provide some um, insight and just some information on uh, not only nominating chapter members for election, but we're gonna walk through what the general roles are for chapters. And uh, you know, this ranges from whether your chapters have, you know, pure, you know, are purely just volunteer led, or you have a combination of staff and, and volunteers depending on the chapter, okay? So there's some good material in the playbook around nominating chapter members for election, um, helping uh, with volunteer turnover. I mean, raise your hand if, you have volunteer turnover problems. Um, and then if you do, the question I would ask is, what are you providing them right now to help them? And if that still is a problem, have you looked in the, uh, to other associations that are similar to you on what they have done to create a better process and, and uh, achieve a better success rate with attracting you know, high quality talent and volunteers? So, uh, you know, kind of think through and map out like what you're doing right now. Um, you know, in a couple of steps as we're just thinking through this. So sending out an email listing all the open positions and descriptions in your chapters. Uh, determining a submission deadline, you know, emailing out the election ballots to chapter members. Um, this is kind of a process you can go through for uh, nominating chapter members. But something I want you to think through is um, what is the benefit for the volunteer? Um, we see some associations that are, uh, you know, providing incentives. That could be in career development. That could be in the way the organization hires at HQ is through their chapters. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways depending on what's right for your association in attracting better talent. Some of the stuff that we're listing on page five and talking about is more of the process uh, um, for, uh, you know, chapter members for election, okay? So page six then kind of runs, runs over officer roles and responsibilities. So chapters most often have a board of three to seven officers. Typically minimum positions held include president, secretary, and treasurer. And a number of positions in the board um, has to be an odd number for neutrality. All right. I'm, I'm curious to know that if anyone has any thoughts on are your chapter boards, um, are they odd numbers? Because I found some that are even and, and it, was, it was interesting to us. I'd be interesting to hear from you all on what, what you find working or, or not working. So again, um, this is on page six. Um, and so we just wanted to kind of lay out if you're, if you're building out affiliation agreements or um, roles and responsibilities uh, templates for your chapters, succession planning uh, templates, so on and so forth. We just kind of listed out some of the uh, roles and responsibilities that we recognize exist uh, for these chapter officers. Okay, so president, we run through vice president, again, correlating to page six, so I won't read all of these off. Um, communication director is another one um, at, at your chapter. It, I, I think it'd be really smart to see if you can get a volunteer dedicated to communication or membership engagement. 
often we see the president, vice president, and treasurer. Um, but is there someone that is, you know, uh, um, signs up for this role? And often, and often we find, do people just they're given the the role uh, um, at that chapter, or are you are you have a process in place? Do you have a process in place that they actually are signing something? So it clearly states, and it doesn't have to be complicated, but just a one pager that says, yes, you're a volunteer, but here's what's expected of you. If you don't have that, that's a, that's a really powerful tool um, to give to your chapters, um, and that helps us in section planning. That helps with uh, you know, talent uh, um, and, and volunteer turnover. And then um, secretary, uh, treasurer, so we just listed out some of the roles and responsibilities uh, uh, for those chapters. So, um, you know, today's webinar uh, was designed to just kind of review um, this, uh, this playbook. One thing I, I want to show real quick is the, uh, the templates at the back. So if you pop over to the playbook and you scroll down or, or head over to the appendix, you'll see that we have added a, a bunch of different tools in here, uh, depending on what you need right now. So, um, you know, reports on annual activity uh, from your chapters, um, updates, in, you know, a nice template to update the board of directors and officer information. Um, and again, you can download this, convert it, and you can um, add your own flavor to it, but this is a, a, a good template for you all to use. Um, we have the chapter event summary templates. Uh, we're gonna be going over events more in a couple of weeks at our next webinar. But um, you know, asking for attendance information, trying to get the data if you don't have it automated yet, um, sponsorship information. So you know, we see a lot of associations collecting and creating a CRM or a database of sponsors so that they can unify that or create a uh, national agreement with the sponsor that allows the, the chapters to take advantage of it. Um, so you know, we got some templates to, to grab um, all of that in here as well. Okay. So take a look at that. Um, again, this is uh, actually a lot of this has been created from uh, associations giving us these templates and us putting them all together for you. All right. All right. So uh, what I want to share with you real quick. Um, so next week we're going to be in um, the DC area for our roundtables. Um, so if you have been enjoying the webinars uh, and you haven't made out to a roundtable yet, these roundtables are uh, completely free. We're going to feed you, um, and these are an opportunity for you to network with other CRPs that are um, just like you. So we, we invite eight to ten associations, or I should say we limit it to eight, eight to ten associations in each city. So next week we're in D.C. for lunch on Tuesday, Alexandra on Wednesday morning, and Reston on Thursday morning. So Sarah our, and our marketing team will drop those links into the chat if you haven't checked those out yet. Uh, but again, there's no, I, I want to reiterate this again, there's no sales here. This is purely for you to come and meet uh, the people that are on these webinars, um, the associations that are in their area that you guys can learn together. We've been doing this for about two months now, and we're going to do them in each city every month uh, because we've been finding that you guys are, are getting so much value out of it. Uh, we've seen associations connect on incredible projects together. Some that, uh, the last one, there was a, an association that was just um, about to uh, upgrade their technology because their mentorship program was working so well. And there was another association just starting their mentorship program. So it was a perfect uh, uh, connection. And, and this is what the roundtables are all about. So come out and uh, see us. We, we typically have a, a light agenda on a topic. Um, uh, but the, the general sense is just for you all to, to meet each other, okay? So definitely come out and, and see us for those. So those links are in the round table. And then the next webinar we're going to do um, is just finishing up the review of this playbook. So it's going to be a part two of this mini series. We're going to go over membership, event, and, and volunteers, um, key questions as you're building out your chapter playbook, and membership um, event best practices for chapters. Okay. So nice, short, and sweet today to kick off. Uh, hopefully you're, you're winding down for the, uh, the weekend here. I hope everybody has a very happy Easter, um, a, a great weekend, um, and that you get some R&R &R with uh, the families as well. Hopefully where you're at, the weather is turning. Uh, Detroit's getting some, I think we're supposed to be 70 some degrees tomorrow. So I know that the cabin fever is going to be uh, um, on widespread in, in the city. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot them over to us. Um, we're always here to help. I'm very glad to serve you all, and hopefully we'll see a bunch of you out at the roundtables next week. Have a fantastic weekend.